bilingualism is better than monolingualism. That's actually a relatively new conclusion. In the old days, cognitive psychologists argued, based on no data or really biased studies, that bilinguals were somehow limited. Um, the idea was that if you were a bilingual, then you had to fill up more of your brain with language, and then so there wasn't as much computational brain power to learn anything else. So they actually made the argument that bilinguals were dumber than monolinguals. Now that actually rigorous controlled studies have been conducted, we know not only was that wrong, it was completely wrong. Bilinguals have a ton of advantages over us monolinguals. It's amazing. And those advantages are over and above advantages that come with speaking two languages. Why is that? Bilinguals have to become mental jugglers. They have to figure out when to use each language and when they use one language, they need to suppress the other. So they have to redirect their attention to one language or the other. They need to restrict themselves to one language or the other. And all of that mental juggling produces a whole bunch of benefits, cognitive benefits. So for example, remember the Stroop effect where you had to report the color of the ink of words? And there was a problem that you sort of can't stop yourself from reading words. Well, it turns out bilinguals are better at stopping themselves from reading words in a particular language because they have all of this extra experience controlling where their attention goes. So on all sorts of tasks related to selective attention, where you have to selectively attend to one thing, and withdraw your attention from everything else, bilinguals are much better at that than monolinguals. Executive control is another phenomenon where bilinguals outstrip us monolinguals. What is that? Executive control is the ability to selectively attend to things, but also to decide what you're going to attend to when and to control um, and monitor your behaviors in a way that works best for whatever your goal is. So let me give you an example. There was a study in which bilingual and monolingual subjects were simply asked to categorize words. First, they were asked to categorize the words according to one category. So say animals versus non-animals. So each word you read, you had to decide whether it was an animal or a non-animal. And then later in the study, you had to categorize things in a different way, say living versus non-living. Bilinguals are better at making that shift. They can make the shift more quickly and they can respond to the new categorization judgment more quickly than monolinguals. There are a ton of advantages to being bilingual um, that are over and above the advantages of knowing a second language. So remember when we talked about words as being arbitrary? right? And you watch the video of people making sounds of a dog in all sorts of different languages. Bilinguals are much better at understanding the arbitrariness of words and labels than monolinguals are because they know that different words describe the same thing. An apple is an apple, whether you call it a bum in French or their apple in English. Bilinguals are more sensitive to the pragmatic aspects of language. An example with children would be, do children understand when they're talking on the telephone and not using video that the other person can't see them? Or do children understand that they can't convey information by pointing if the person they're conveying that information to isn't looking at them or is blind? Bilinguals are better. Bilingual kids are better than monolingual kids. Bilinguals score much higher on measures of creativity and cognitive flexibility than monolinguals. In other words, a whole lot of artists are bilingual for a reason, because they're more creative. Bilinguals are also more creative in the problem-solving do domain. They're better able to switch their perspectives 
on problems, and so they're more likely to solve those problems. Now, there are some disadvantages to being bilingual. They're pretty minimal, but there are disadvantages. One of them is if you ask people to do a lexical decision task, look at a group of letters and report whether it's a word or a non-word, bilinguals are slower at that task than are monolinguals. Think about it, bilinguals are going through two lexicons or two dictionaries worth of words compared to monolinguals only going through one. Bilinguals know more words and so it takes them a little longer to make word, non-word decisions. And bilinguals are a little slower to master both languages, especially if they're simultaneous early bilinguals. And as a result of that, some bilingual parents make the decision to raise their children as monolinguals because they worry that raising their child as a bilingual will slow them down. Now there's been some research on that, and it turns out that if you look at bilingual and monolingual children, bilingual children know fewer words in one language than monolinguals know in that language. So let's say your child is raised uh, Spanish-English bilingual. If you count the number of words, so vocabulary size, in, say, English for a bilingual child, and compare that to the number of words or the vocabulary size of a monolingual, the monolingual is going to know more words in their own, in their only language than the bilingual is going to know in one of their languages. But if you count the number of words that a bilingual knows across both of their languages, then there's no difference between vocabulary size for monolinguals and bilinguals. The total number of words known across both languages is the same as the number of words known by monolinguals. Now I'm going to tell you about the most recent work with bilingualism that is causing all sorts of old people like me to try to become bilingual as we age. And what is that? This was a finding that rocked cognitive neuroscience. You guys know what dementia is. We've talked about Alzheimer's disease. And Alzheimer's disease becomes increasingly prevalent as people age. And there's not much of a treatment for it, except for one thing, bilingualism. It turns out that bilinguals they still get dementia, they still get Alzheimer's disease, but they get it four to five years later than monolinguals. Now, for students in their 20s, hmm, that doesn't sound like a big deal. But when you're my age, getting another five years of life without dementia is huge. So becoming bilingual protects people. It's like a vaccine against dementia, and it lasts for about four or five years. Here's another shocker. Bilinguals are more likely to recover from strokes, recover cognitively from strokes. There's no difference when it comes to motor recovery, the ability to, to physically function. But when it comes to thinking, when it comes to cognition, bilinguals are twice as likely, two times more likely to recover from a stroke than monolinguals. Now, why? Why is this happening? Why are bilinguals getting Alzheimer's disease four or five years later than monolinguals? And why are bilinguals better able to recover from stroke cognitively? It turns out bilingual brains and monolingual brains are different, and different in some really big ways. When you look at the brains of bilinguals, they have more neurons than the brains of monolinguals. The way that's described is to say that there's more dense gray matter. And remember, gray matter, the difference between gray and white, right? And that difference is really big in the bottom part of the parietal cortex, the inferior parietal cortex, which is shown here in yellow. And a lot of language processing goes on in that area. Even more interestingly, the younger you are when you learn your second language, 
the more neurons you have in that part of your brain. So <laughs> bilinguals have bigger brains or denser brains than monolinguals. As a result, they also have more connections between neurons in their brains. So let's think about uh, Alzheimer's disease and stroke recovery. And I'm gonna use an analogy that is probably only gonna make sense to people from Los Angeles. If you think about the freeway system in Los Angeles, LA County, downtown LA, it's massive. So if there's an accident on one freeway, if one freeway is closed down, and that's my analogy for a stroke, you can get where you wanna go by going all sorts of other ways. That's what the bilingual brain does after a stroke. Now compare that to monolinguals, and I'm gonna use a really extreme example here. Um, if you wanna drive from Southern California up to Northern California, there's really only two roads, the I-5 and the 101. When one of those roads is shut down, maybe snow on the I-5 over the grapevine, California just comes to a stop. That's like a monolingual brain after a stroke. We have fewer connections, and so we have less options for going around the damaged areas of our brains. That's not just a supposition. Not only are bilingual brains more dense with neurons than monolingual brains, they really do have more connections. And so bilinguals are better able to compensate for brain damage than monolinguals. So if you wanna do one thing in life to make yourself smarter, more creative, to have a brain that's better able to compensate for brain damage, learn that second or third language. Cool, right?